Tonight's show is brought to you by Ventura Training and Athletics. Restore, train, maintain. Specializing in the restoration of the muscular system to help you move and feel better. Combating TBI, PTSD, and pain through specialized strength training. Again, get your body right, get your mind right, defeat the demons. This is the Veteran Trash Talk Hour, hosted by Nick, Dave, Joe, and Buddy. Today's special guest is Kyle, a former leg infantryman who started nonprofits to take care of real soldiers. <laughs> What up, Trash Talkers? Welcome to episode 27 of the Trash Talk Hour. Shout out to our sponsors, Ventura Training and Athletics, Cardinal Financial, and of course, 10th Mountain Whiskey. They got the good stuff. Type in that BTT code and get yourself a discount on some awesome bourbon. Also, I'd like to welcome our guest, Kyle. He's going to be talking to us about his business ventures, and Joe is MIA today. So we called in the mad Russian bill for some support, and he showed so as always, I'm here with Nick and Buddy. Over to you, Buddy. Let's get the show started. All right, hey, look here. So this election thing is going on, and uh, boys, I our thought it was over. community, it's our over. veteran community has been talking a lot of shit, <laughs> and uh, and I got it. Some of us are happy. Some it reminds me of that Chris Rock thing when he was talking about the O.J. Simpson thing, and he was. On, but there are a lot of, like, veterans that are like, well, they come to get my guns. They're going to get them one bullet at a time. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. That's not true. If they want your guns, they're going to come get your guns if they know you have guns. The one thing that we should have learned in almost 25 years of dealing with insurgents is that when they come to your house, you go, Miska, would you like some chai? Have a seat. Yada, yada, yada. And then when they leave, then if you have an opportunity, you do whatever it is you do. But stop saying you're going to, like, give them one bullet at a time because you're not because your family lives there, Nana lives there, Paul lives there. You ain't about to do nothing about that life. So stop acting like you're going to. Not to mention three-quarters of the guys that are talking about the smack haven't done any physical activity in, since their last PT test in the army. Like, <laughs> let's all be honest with ourselves and know that we're going to be angry, but what are we going to do? We're going to sit there and yell at the TV for a little bit. That's about it. Yeah, watch some YouTube videos on the queue or whatever, whatever that thing's called, the qu- canon. <laughs> the QAnon, so, the QAnon, QAnon. homie. Hey, <laughs> hey, JF, yeah. JFK <laughs> Jr.'s come back, <laughs> calm down. Everybody knows yeah, that. we covered this. Uh, we've covered this a couple of times, but Dave used to be one of those guys, uh, you know, 9-11 truther and, you know, all that stuff. And, I mean, again, they're both sides of the bell curve. Both of them think that the government has all this kind of power that they can actually orchestrate that. They can't even solve a fucking budget. And you think they're going to – You know when, you know when like, America is going gonna, is gonna to learn that L.A., San Francisco, New York, Chicago, and Houston – don't run things when they piss off the farmers and truck drivers in the united states and the farmers and truck drivers both go you know what the rural counties will deliver some food there but you people in the big cities how about you you fend for yourselves we'll be fine for a year or so how long can new york sustain itself without outside people coming in to bring them food water everything else not at all they can't Zero days. They've proven that from this COVID thing. They right. can't sustain themselves. So when the regular people decide they're finished making money off of the city, you know, large cities can't live without rural population. Rural populations can live forever. Yeah, didn't food. they make a country song about that? Was it Hank Williams? Uh, oh, Country yeah, Boy Can Survive? Co- yeah, country I think they said something about that. <laughs> but, uh, hey, so yeah, yeah. Buddy, are you saying that people in cities aren't normal people? No, I'm saying that people in oh. cities, oh. they, they uh, because they don't have to go out and make their own food, they haven't made their own, they've never made their own shit. Like, they've literally never developed food to go into their mouth and go through all of their internal organs and come out the other end on their own accord. They've bought it or gone to the store and got it. They've never 
gone out and hunted it. They've never planted a garden and raised food and then eaten that food. And then they've never created their own shit. Every, every single one of them? Shit, you can sit here and think that, you're, that there's going to be some great utopian society where everybody gets along and blah, like. You might I just buy a lot of. I just with that argument. I just buy a lot of toilet paper because that's the way to go, right? Yeah. Hey, you the, know what? The, the, news to, the news. The news. told me that you need lots of toilet paper. That's it. And that Biden's the president already. So You're good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what yeah. everybody's panicking yeah. about. I got fucking uh, two hundred rolls here. I'm good to go. Yeah. No idea. No idea at all. But what I do know is that you know we as a society allow people like that's how societies are built when you allow people to do x thing without any repercussions for long enough that they think that's the standard when the repercussions come and you set society sets a standard for for what we do it's just like in the army or the marines or anywhere else if getting a haircut is a standard and then some dude walks by you with hair down to his freaking shoulders and you don't say anything then hair down to your shoulders is the new standard. You made that standard because you allowed them to get away with it. If we allowed them to get away with it and there are no repercussions to it and we don't enforce like the things that we want, like term limits or, you know, balancing a budget, then, then whose fault is it? Right, if we're exactly. weak and they take advantage of us, it's not yeah, their you, fault, it's our fault. You try to explain that to people all the time who don't ever bother reading the Constitution. It's that we're in charge. Like, they, they yeah. are not our leaders. They represent yo, us. Yo, <laughs> the, the fact that we refer to political people as leaders drives Terrible. me up the wall. They're Terrible. not leaders of anything. They're mouthpieces. They're supposed no. to just tell people what – their region of the country believes in. And the fact that we put all of this hype on the federal government, right. vote for your local government. That's where all the power is supposed to be, local and state. The federal government has like 10, maybe. And hey, most uh, of them they created so that they would have a job. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fact, you know, and I love when people celebrate or get uh, are triggered by the presidency because it's like, do you do realize that he has n nothing to do with your fucking life. Like, nothing. There's a, there's a no. few people that Not have certain all. jobs, that have certain jobs that, you know, it affects them. You know, people who are big players in geopolitical aspects, you know, where it's, you know, trade deals and stuff like that. But if you have a normal middle class job, it really doesn't matter who the president is. Um, now, if you're a business owner, your local government can really hand bone you. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the federal stuff can get in your way, but it's usually your local shit getting in the way. Your gas prices, Take a look at your state taxes on that. You know, it's like that that's who's that's who's remini on that one. Um, where are you, buddy, right now? Your roads. Hey, my roads are all my roads are all jacked up. Well, unless you're on a US interstate. That's your state, homie. That's your yeah, county. I I, Maybe you should talk to them about why traffic is horrible in your Yeah, hey buddy, uh, you're kind of breaking up, so I you're uh I yes, because I'm in the mountains. I, Shut up. You're in the mountains. You're at a water park, right? You, you, I thought you weren't allowed within 15 feet of a school or water park. When did that <laughs> uh, change? It's not 15 feet. First off, it's 600, <laughs> and water parks are on that. Uh, okay. I can I can be anywhere around water parks. I just wanted to make sure we weren't accomplices, you know, to a, to a crime. But we'll turn it over to Bill uh, because he. This is a new territory for him. He came on the show one time and uh, he just talked UFC. But seeing as Joe's not here, we can just make fun of him. Uh, we 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 are going to miss Joe. It's his it's his wife's birthday, so I hope she's having a great time. Happy but birthday. Joe, but Joe, we're not really going to miss you with sunglasses on, going huh huh the whole show. Okay, uh, <laughs> you literally say nothing and then you just laugh with a little giggle. Huh huh. So uh, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, don't get too triggered. Can talk we about talk about why Joe wears sunglasses in his house? Uh, we know why he wears sunglasses in his house. Uh, b because he's stoned. But that's that's fine. That's uh, why around the 45-minute mark, you just don't understand what he's saying Yeah, anymore. it's perfectly yeah. legal what he's doing, where he's doing it. So it's it's okay. Uh, that's, this is, that's, it's, that's if his internet is even working long enough for him to spit something out. 
Yeah. So, Bill, welcome to the Trash Talk Hour as our guest host. We're glad to have you. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, Trash Talkers, you've seen me plenty of times before between UFC pickums and, and talking about uh, Nick's hatred for the Davardi concept, which, terrible. honestly, I, I think we could have three episodes on that. Uh, for the batters out there, we'll be doing another uh, UFC pickup for next week's pay-per-view. Uh, and I'm also going to do live shots of me at a casino in Kansas City. I'm going to do my own money. Dave, don't forget to chip in on that. And we're going we're gonna to win big on that one. That, that one's a super easy card for us to bet on. Um, so what I want to talk about is relatively quick. And it's some, some stuff that I dealt with over the past week in the past two weeks, which is- Herpes is a lifelong thing, Bill. What's that? Herpes is a lifelong thing, all right, so. Oh yeah, I just use a blowtorch <laughs> and uh, burns it right off. Um, crabs go running though, so you gotta, you gotta yeah, watch they, out they for that. Can't control but, uh, those sons of bitches. But what I wanna talk about is, is uh, these veterans and even active duty service members that let the military define them as who they are. So their plans when they get out is to tell people I'm a veteran, and therefore, I should get a high-paying job right off the bat. Uh, I just, I've had a couple of soldiers uh, reach out to me this, over the past week talking about how they got out. And then, hey, I told everybody I was a veteran, and no one cared. I should get a job because I'm a veteran. Uh, and we've had a few uh, business owners that have been on the show. I'm sure Kyle will talk about it, too. Is These veterans that get out need to understand that nobody owes you shit. No one cares. I mean, whether we feel they should or not, the reality is when you get out saying I'm a veteran doesn't mean shit. And it doesn't mean you're going to get a high paying job without just putting in work. And guess what? Those of us that are retiring, you're starting over. If you're getting out, you're not going to walk into, if you get out as a sorry major, you're not going to be in charge of a Fortune 500 company. It's just, it's just the way it is. Uh, so really I just want to talk about, there's, there's way too many, and we see that on our page too. There's too many people that define themselves by their military career. And we saw it with Buddy's picture. I mean, look, we were just talking about how he got attacked because he put on an old jacket and he had one ribbon on it. So it's something that defined who Buddy was because they found his old green jacket that had a ribbon on it. And I know all of us that are still active have seen it too. People will start assessing who you are as a person by the chest lettuce. And, and it's absolutely ridiculous. So for the trash talkers out there, active duty and veterans out there understand the military doesn't define who you are you have to define yourself and the country and the world doesn't owe you shit just keep grinding keep working everything will work out stop blaming everyone else for your problems and again nobody owes you shit that's my uh, that's my soapbox. Cheers, Bill. Hey, Boom, cheers. Che cheers, cheers, first Bill. of all, can we go back? Can we go back to where Bill said something about that picture? I yes, just, you can talk about that. Now that we're on this show, I was cleaning my house in that in that time. I was cleaning my bucket house. There was a swifter, a mop, a trash bag that was going out. I was in the middle of cleaning the house. I feel like. I feel like maybe that was lost in the in the picture. Is cleaning that? I was cleaning the house, guys. I was. was to this clean. day, we I still don't have a dirty I'm house. Not a hoarder. <laughs> yeah, so that, that that'll go into my book of Earl, but it's not time for that yet. But that's that's that would have been a good lead into it. I was going to say, Bill, that was that was really boring. Uh, I think you learned that at the academy, and uh, you learned how to talk to people like you're their dad. So I really appreciate that message because that's what it felt like. I felt like you were telling me to like be an adult. Um, Especially and, you, since you're still <laughs> at the academy, babysitting COVID patients. Yes, yes. Um, no, but that was an awesome message, Bill. I'll just uh, give you a little shit because it's trash talking. Uh, don't want you to get too triggered. That that being said, we have Kyle on the show now. Well, actually, before we talk, Kyle, your message was actually articulated pretty well by a guest we had, Navy SEAL Mike Donnelly. So we're trying to team up with him. When we had him on, you know, he, he talks about getting out, having all the qualifications you want as a Navy SEAL. And, you know, he wasn't good enough to write a book or do a movie, but like he, you know, he was, he's like, I, I didn't make any money for a while. I just kept hustling, hustling, hustling. And now he's, now he's a multimillionaire, you know? And so it's like, just keep hustling, keep getting after it. Um, so we've got Kyle. Kyle uh, is from Oklahoma. Is that correct? 
That's right. And, uh, that is right, Oklahoma. And uh, it, which is surprising because I thought they raised men there. And when you joined the Army, <laughs> you, you decided not to go airborne. I don't know why. Uh, I'm sure you'll be no. able to talk about that. But uh, like I explain this every show that we do an intro song about people and we make fun of the guests. Yep. So that the song definitely yeah. has something to do with that. So you, you started you started a couple of nonprofits to take care of the real soldiers, like the paratroopers that get out and are like hurt. So we really appreciate that you take care of the, our, like our battle buddies like that. But yeah, I think you started what active duty RX and um, what's the other one? Uh, battle on the home front. And I think you're yeah, getting into the, into the coffee business now. So yeah, welcome yeah. to the show. Tell us about your service and tell us all about uh, what you got going on. Cheers, Cheers Yeah, what's up? What's up, Trash Talkers? Yeah, so uh, I started from 2008, 2012. Army was not airborne. Uh, my recruiter made sure he fucked me when I went in in every way. So, <laughs> uh, you know, did, Dave's a recruiter. Know, <laughs> Damn you. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I so I served and and I got out in 2012 and man it wasn't shit it wasn't a year after I got out and I was a tri poly drug addict homeless with a suicide attempt, um and so I started trying to get my life back and I dug deep into natural medicine and uh, CBD and and plants not just CBD but plants have been utilized all over the world in natural medicine, and so in 2018 I started Active Duty RX and. Uh, it's a supplement company, and my first product was aimed specifically for mental health with PTSD. Um, and that company, man, it did phenomenal. We had I did nationwide sales with it out of the gate, and um, it's still thriving. And that same year, I man, it felt so good to get get my life back on track. And when I launched that company, it was specifically just for me. I was trying to figure out my own path because. When I got out, that was the biggest deal. I lost my purpose. I, I, I'm a fighter, I'm a, I'm a soldier. And I didn't have that no more in that camaraderie. And man, I went down the, I went down fast. I mean, quick. And, uh, and so after that, I, I figured it out. And that's when I put it to, you know, put it to the public and, and tried to advocate and show people that, man, you can feel good with the plants that are in this. God was the best pharmacist ever. And, and I say that all the time, but um, so I do nationwide sales with that, and and I found out real quick that you know PTSD does not discriminate, and I ended up having uh, mothers and fathers that was giving it to their children for sexual trauma, domestic abuse survivors that were getting quality of life back. It was so powerful, and so uh, that same year, I wanted to do more. I love it. I love giving back to our brothers and our sisters. So I started Battle on the Home Front, which was a, a big therapy program, uh, growing their own medicine. At that time, it was it was uh, hemp, cannabis. But I mean, that's, that was doing great. And, and it's kind of turned into something even bigger. Now I film a show at the Oklahoma Republican headquarters office. They give me a veteran, giving veterans voices in Oklahoma. And um, we bring in I bring in uh, nonprofit, veteran-based nonprofits, and talk about what they're doing. And veteran entrepreneurs, I'm very big into that. Um, we talk about therapy options. We talk about addiction, mental health stigmas, um, all things veterans. You know what I mean? And, and bring in some absolute decorated war heroes and just talk about their struggles coming home, trying to navigate life um, out of the military and trying to find that purpose and that that camaraderie again, because I think that camaraderie really holds us together because that love we have over there and we fought next to our brothers, it's, it's powerful. And when you lose that, it's real easy to get lost. So that's what I advocate with that. And, um, and even more so with battle on the home front, um, we, you know, like I said, we do the therapy options, stuff like that. I, I get groups of veterans together. I take them to fights. I take them to events and stuff like that. And then just recently was my first one, that I did, but I'm starting to make this mission right now where um, I'm getting veterans and we're attending funerals for veterans that, that died that don't have family to, to be the pallbearers, to give them that, you know, that, that good stuff. So um, um, I also own Barrage Coffee. I just launched that company a while back ago and it's a CBD infused uh, gourmet coffee and it's doing great. And I'm um, starting an affiliate program to where veterans can make very good money, you know, selling the coffee. And I, I advocate strongly as well about veteran entrepreneurs being the CEO of their business, of, of their own companies. All of my products, I offer white labels for you to take my products. We build your brand. I advise you, I mentor you and I coach you 
to be the CEO of your own company. And I'm very big on that because in the military, we had so many good things. Like I was a grunt, right? When I, when I come home, everybody's like, oh, you're going to be a cop, which I can't be because I got in some criminal trouble with my addiction and all that. So I'm a security guard, you know, the fight and stuff, but you don't have to come out from whatever you're doing there. All those things that we learned in there, like leadership, working well under pressure and so many more things that were, were driven in us. We can take that and, and man, we can make our own path. We don't got to work. Fuck working for somebody. I say that right now. You know, if you can be your own boss, be your own boss. And I advocate for that. And I have them options. Um, there's no, it's, it's easy. So, um, and if I can do it, trust me, anybody can do it. But, um, and then, so that's, that's battle on the home front. That's barrage. And then I also earn early, I own early bird farms. And I started that last year. It's a 10 acre vegetable farm. And I let, I let veterans come out with their families and incorporate the family therapy aspect of it. Um, I advocate strongly that food is medicine and, and that's a powerful tool in mental health. Um, and what I do with that farm is I donate half of all the, all the produce to veterans and their families. Um, and then I sell the other half, you know, it don't, it just pays, barely pays for anything, but you know, we're, we're giving a lot of medicine away because food is medicine. And, um, so yeah, that's me. That's what I'm doing. And that's it. <laughs> Kyle, that's some really cool shit. I mean, just, you know, honorable on what you're doing for the veteran community and everything. Thank you. Um, what I, what I want to hit on, and if you're cool with sharing it, you know, you started off the conversation with you got out and shit got ugly. Okay. Bad, our viewers, bad. That's, what, that's what we're all about. You know, we're, we're partnered with Stop Soldier Suicide. Um, a lot of people that are watching and listening, they might want to kind of like what happened? Like you got out, you tried to find some jobs. Can you talk about, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Life, yeah. What kind of cost it? If you don't feel free to share, if you don't want to, that's fine. But it's going to help out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm an open book. My, my story is quite powerful and it's, as dark as it was, it's, it's the man who I am now because of my prison, because of addiction and homelessness and suicide. Um, it is what it is. And, and I think our past make us the men we are today. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So when I got out, I just, I really just lost that purpose. I didn't have accountability. I, I was, and I was dealing with mental health and I didn't know it. And I was really numbing the pain with narcotics. I was a tri-poly drug addict and that's from opiates to amphetamines the benzos, alcohol. I was really more than a tripoly, but, um, so man, and, and eventually in that kind of an addiction, you know, people love you and they advocate for you and fight for you. But sometimes they, by the end of it, when you ran everybody off, they say, Hey man, I love you. But you got to figure this shit out or you're going to die, but you can't be around my kids. You can't be around your nieces and nephews. And, and so shortly I was homeless and, you know, I, I was out doing bad shit. There's no doubt about it. And I lost all that. And, um, I ended up, I ended up, I've been hospitalized several, several times for attempted suicide, just, uh, pharmaceuticals. And, um, by the grace of God, they found me and, um, some other ones with the, you know, they caught me with the gun, going to go do it and just barely missed it. You know, I've been in the VA hospital up in mental health probably more times than I can count at that time in my life. And, um, and mostly that, it was mostly addiction that took me down that road. And when I started figuring out natural medicine and started figuring out and addressing the mental health side of it, because I was, I'm, I'm an alpha male, I'm, I'm caught strong. And, and I felt like if I come home and I was still hurt from the war, they fucking won, you know, and I, I, I don't lose, you know? And so I numb that and, and which that ain't the way I just needed to talk about it. I needed to figure it out. I need to. I need somebody to hold my hand, you know, and, and it took that, you know, so. Hey, Kyle, well, uh, real quick, what was the, uh, you know, so there are a lot of guys that are going through kind of the same kind of thing. What was the light bulb moment for you where you realized I got to fucking, like, because you're right, you know, I've had family that were addicts, and, and at the end of it, after so many times of getting burnt, you just kind of push them to the side, and you're like, no, nah, man, like, I love you, yeah. but – I, you know, I can't, I can't ruin my family to help you. Um, yeah. And, and like, what was the light bulb moment for you where you were like, all right, I got to fix this and I got to do it for myself. Like what happened that, that caused you to go ahead and decide it's not everybody else that's fucked up. Like I've got to fix yeah. it. Well, I mean, a lot of that was being dope sick, living in some woods, 
you know, and, and by that time, every little girlfriend I was dating at the time done run me off, you know what I mean? And I mean, I had nothing. I was rock bottom. I was, I was bouncing around and, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a soldier and I'm a fighter and we all are. And that's so important to go back to that moment when you felt most proud, you was a killer, you was a fighter, you die for your brothers and, and dig deep and find that because it's there and it gets saturated with the fucking bullshit of life and the pain of life. But we're all fighters. We're all soldiers. Everybody that's watching this, all the trash talkers, um, you just got to dig deep and realize, you know what? I'm a fighter and I ain't going to give up. I ain't mama didn't raise no bitch and we're going to do this. And either, you know, you, you, you pull it together and, and you keep fighting because there's so much purpose out there. And, and even if you're in Oklahoma, if you want to get involved with me and, and what I do, man, I, I, I do most of this stuff, you know, I orchestrate, orchestrate all this by myself and I have brothers that, that I can reach now. We can do this. And man, if you need that camaraderie and that brotherhood and that love, man, I got it. I got more than I can give away. So please, man, you, you know, and I do events and shit. I, I mean, I put so much stuff on. I, my wife's about to. My wife is about to kill me because I'm 24/7 right now about <laughs> about getting back. But it's my therapy, and I love it. And once I found that camaraderie and that brotherhood again, it's like a drug to me. It's like a drug. This is my new drug, and and I love giving back. And like I said earlier, I'm putting this thing together in Oklahoma. I just attended a funeral yesterday. It was a 27 year Air Force veteran, and his wife died of COVID, and he didn't have no family. And uh, so I volunteered and I went and, and I was a pallbearer at his funeral. And um, that's my new mission. That's what I'm doing here in Oklahoma. And, and even if they got family, we're going to show up in force and give these heroes a, a farewell they deserve. Um, and it's powerful. Any, anything that I cry about, and I'm a very emotional guy um, because I'm passionate in everything I do. Um, but I felt it in my heart and, and it was put on my heart. And um, I know that I'd want that one day when I'm an old man and I fought for this country and, I would want the younger generation of brothers or sisters to come in and bear me off, um, bear, bear me away like I should be. So, and that cheers, answers, Kyle. Cheers, yeah. cheers to Kyle. I know Nick's cheers. got something to say, but cheers, man. Yeah, Fuck cheers him. to that, Kyle, for sure. Um, yeah, we're 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 just starting ourselves. Uh, you know, about five and a half months old, and you know, our Facebook group's up to about thirteen eight right now. So, like, we're uh, we're we're getting up there with that message. We're trying to get out to them. Uh, very similar to yours is that we, we're a for-profit company. Like we want yeah. to make as much money as possible so that we can do more than people who are relying yes. on donations. It's like, and yeah. we're not joking when we say we want to have beach houses everywhere, far, uh, you know, farms, we want to have, you know, places in the mountains or the Smokies. So like you could take your squad up there, you know, like yeah. oh, buddy must've got a Tinder swipe, right? His screen went off again. Anytime Buddy's screen goes off, it's because his Tinder thing went off and he has to swipe. He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on, he's on Grinder, not Tinder. No, it's Tinder. He did a video on he's how to. He's probably on that too. No, you're, you're probably right, Kyle. He's probably on that too. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to get that message out, you know. And I'm, I'm still active duty. Bill's still active duty. Dave's still active duty. Buddy's still active duty. You know, we're all doing this on the side, and it, it is a drug. And it, it's when, once you get that oh, community cool. fired up again. And you actually get talking to people. It's just it's one hundred percent awesome. But on on a serious note, because you know me, I'm the serious guy of the group. Um, do you think if you went airborne, none of that bad stuff would have happened? Man, you know what? I, worse than not going airborne, I should have. You know, and I should have went into a Ranger bat or went in eighteen series. I regret that more than not going to fucking eighty second airborne. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, buddy, buddy, buddy spent some time, a little bit of time in both. So he's, uh, he's got some time in the, the 82nd. I think he was – like we always make fun of him because he was a staff sergeant when I came in the Army, uh, and I think we made E7 at the same time. Uh, not, not, not quite sure how that's possible, but he figured, he figured a way out. He figured out how to stay staff sergeant as long as possible. And then uh, the only time – That's not true. Was, that's not true. I was trying, to say, not, special, not I was true. trying to say specialist as long as I could. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us the truth, buddy. What's the truth? Well, You're according to uh, according to Facebook, I'm still a staff sergeant, so fuck it. Might as well stay that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was your fault. 
So you posted your personal business. It was Veterans Day. You wanted to put a picture up there. I posted a fucking picture. Yeah, there you go. Everybody feel sorry. We all buddy. thanked Buddy for his service. Yeah, thank you for your service, Buddy. Uh, hey, so Kyle, Kyle. I like, posted not- a picture on a Veterans <laughs> Trash Talk thing. It's not like that was my profile picture. It didn't even go on my own page, you fucking dicks. <laughs> Trigger. Hey, hey, Kyle, real, real quick back to Kyle. So, again, website. my house is clean. Buddy, shut up real quick. Hey, Kyle, websites, <laughs> yeah, websites, links. Uh, where you guys, where do you market yeah, your stuff? Where yeah, you buy your coffee, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, all my products are 100% THC free. I sell to a lot of cops, first responders, active duty soldiers. And actually, so in 2018, as far as I know, until anybody tells me different, I was actually the first um, CBD company um, in history to be on a military installation. And, and I was invited by the tops at uh, Tinker Air Force Base in here in Oklahoma. But they ended up putting out a memo about um, six months into it and shut it down. But uh, House, House, House just passed uh, um, uh, for active duty soldiers to be able to use CBD products that are THC free. And all my products are QR codes, batch codes, third-party lab testing. But you can check out Active Duty RX products at ActiveDutyRx.com. Uh, the coffee, which is gourmet award-winning coffee, um, at BarrageCoffee.com. Um, you can find me at Kyle Early 33 on Facebook. And then um, Battle on the Home Front is going up. The, the website's going up right now, and I sell all my merchandise on there, which is Veteran Lives Matter. Um, IGY6 t-shirts, um, women's apparel, men's apparel, hoodies, leggings for the women, you name it, we got it. Um, and all of that, the proceeds go back into all my veteran outreach. I, I pay out of pocket right now on everything I do there. Um, so Kyle, I'm starting to order. Yes, sir. Kyle, do you have uh, men's tank tops? I do, brother. I'm going to give you an extra <laughs> small, though. Yeah, buddy's buddy's upset that the VTT doesn't have a men's tank top yet. Uh, hey, well, hey, well, I'm gonna get with y'all after this, and I'm gonna do my best. And I got, I I have an advisory company, um, and and I advise and help people with stuff, and um, I'd love to work with y'all. And I got some phenomenal um, options out there for y'all to help with your apparel and to help with y'all's mission. And I I would be grateful to be able to help y'all with that. For sure, we'll stay on after we stop uh stop the recording, and we'll and we'll we'll chat about it. Uh, again, yeah. I, I, I am the, I, you know, like I said, I'm the talent of this organization. Uh, and I, I bear You're obviously that not the looks. You're obviously I know, Dave's the looks. looks. Dave's the looks. We've already covered this. Dave's <laughs> the face man. So, like, I, I, I bear this cross, you know, and it gets heavy sometimes, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and it's really humbling for me to, you know, to take care of as much as I, I, I have to take care of. That, that being said, I offered Buddy a chance to design a tank top. In fact, I even gave him, hooked him up with our designer saying, make it happen. And again, if you don't send it, buddy, if you don't send it, all right, nobody gives a shit about your idea. All right, Dave knows this. I yell about him all the time. I'm like, I don't give a shit about your idea. Have you sent it yet? I made my right. own tank top. We saw that. That's my good ideas and takes credit for him. That's, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's not true, Dave. That's not true at all. Um, we, uh, Again, buddy, I saw how you designed your tank top. It was awful, right? It was awful. So that's why I hooked you up with our designer so that you guys could come up with a, a better tank top. But again, I'm still waiting for it, buddy. Anytime you want to actually deliver uh, on what you want. I just sent it. I just sent it. Did you send it to me? No? Okay. But anyways, we'll go into the, the Book of Burl. Now, there was, there's been some problems with the last couple Book of Earls. Uh, one, you should always listen to me because I'm, I'm, I am only was wrong once. And that I was wrong because I thought I was wrong, but I was actually right. So the only time I was ever wrong is because I thought I was wrong. Uh, so you, you have to listen to the Book of Earl. And, and Bill, that does not count with golf and a back injury, okay? So I was right. I'm still a better golfer than you, and I won the White Claw Challenge. Anyways. Who keeps winning, Nick? Uh, who keeps I just winning? say it. it but so that wasn't would, right. That, that wasn't right. Me as the talent of this of this group. <laughs> it is. It is. You are. You are two and one. Two and one. That's a. It's pretty solid. So we have. I have the whiteboard right. Not in front of me today. Apparently, the people listening on podcasts are complaining because they can't see the whiteboard that I'm talking about. And so you got to watch. You got to watch the YouTube channel. And but 
my, I got a short book of Earl and it has to deal with uh, the best shirt design that we've had, which was my idea, Dave. And that was, don't be a triggered pansy. Okay. Well, I thought that was Joe. No, that was me. That was me. Uh, don't be a triggered pansy. It, it does not mean you're Republican or Democrat. Okay. Snowflakes are all over the place. Snowflakes are all over our page. All right. Triggered pansies are all over our page. And Buddy's post proved it. Okay. Buddy put a picture of himself in a 1999 fucking class A suit. Right. And uniform. <laughs> and and one ribbon. Got, one ribbon. With one ribbon on it. Right. And oh, what wait, is, no, it had it had one ribbon and basic and jump wings. And jump wings. And right. airborne wings. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so the be, the best part of it is is one of his old soldiers gets on there when he actually used to like be a leader. Uh one of his old soldiers got on there and said, Oh, that was my platoon sergeant. You know, he's a master way to go, master sergeant. And that literally triggered somebody. Somebody was like, He's not a master sergeant. And it's like, um, Okay, like that's like you could tell that like he literally said this is of a uniform from 13 years ago. Okay, and it had staff sergeant rank on it. So 13 no, no, years ago, no. go it's ahead. a 23 year old uniform that I haven't worn for 13 years. Oh, okay, I haven't worn it for 13 years. He was proud though. He was wearing it on Veterans Day. You know, they thought he was out of the army. He was trying the uniform on that he used to have. Yeah, it's good. And what I love, trying everybody to get that knows, free buffet. <laughs> everybody knows that i'm a troll on facebook right if, if i i throw it out there and eventually somebody bites and then it You're turns a terrorist into, on facebook not and a troll. it turns into it turns into like a thousand comments you know and like it's just, and all i do is eat popcorn and laugh the entire time that these people are getting so triggered now does that mean that i don't get triggered okay book of Earl, i get triggered okay i 100 percent get triggered everybody gets triggered the point is to stop like once you realize that you've lost your emotional control and you're no longer logical shut the fuck up like stop being a triggered pansy just be like you know what i'm really upset about this and i'm gonna go over there until i can calm down right and i'm not gonna type anything right i, I really don't care that he says he's a master sergeant with staff sergeant right on like you, you took the time to, to type that I, I i don't remember your name but i'll look it up and i'll and I'll, I'll hit you a private message if you get triggered about this if you happen to watch our show but dude you need to chill like imagine if you took that amount of effort in anything else in life you'd probably be a fucking rock star but you took that effort to literally comment on a guy's picture from 13 a uniform from 13 fucking years ago right stop being triggered please for the love of god just just don't be triggered anymore. Get mad. That's fine. That's a great emotion. But then just just chill. Call handle down. it right. Handle that emotion yeah. right. Handle, yeah. handle it. Right? Like it, it, I, I I'm gonna say it. I wasn't gonna say it, but I gotta do it. Right. There are rivalries on our page. Okay. Some of the rivalries are closer to home, some of them are not. Okay. The page is an outlet for people to vent, say whatever the fuck they want. Okay. We don't say things that are, you know, you know, that are hate discrimination, that kind of stuff. We obviously don't allow that. Um, but get on there and get part of that community again. Don't take it so fucking personal. And it's like, I'll say it cause Dave will know what I'm talking about. And I won't say names cause I don't like to embarrass people that aren't actually affiliated with us. But we have about seven admin, okay? Five of them, what? Five of them are military, six are military, right? Or ex-military and whatever. We all drink, all of us, right? So sometimes we approve 17 of the same posts, right? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we don't approve a post that we I should bet. approve. Right. I, Sometimes I don't shit. Bill, I don't Bill, anything. Because you got yelled at, buddy, and you stopped approving it, so you shut down like a little child when you got spanked. Right. No. Nope. So I was just like, approved. I, I, approved. It shouldn't be approved. I don't trust my sense of humor to be good for our page. 
Right. Because that, that, there's some shit that I have seen that I was like, well, that's funny as fuck. I, that's I, a good I, assessment, I, buddy. Approved. And then you guys are like, um, that was a joke about a child. You have to, you can't put that on you there. You can't put that on there. Yeah, that cannot go on there. So, again, Bill approved a, a, a post that my wife actually reported, right? Because she complains about it. And I'm like, stop complaining to me about my page. Don't complain to me about my page. Like, I don't make people can say whatever they want. She goes, no, this is bad. I go, then just report it to the admins and let me look at it, right? And then I look at it and yeah, it was pretty, uh, you know, pretty funny joke. But again, when I decline posts for you, I'm with you too, buddy. when I decline posts, I write, this is hilarious, but no, okay? Like, I at least give them the credit of this is a funny joke, but it's not going on the page. Period. All right, because Facebook and the communist network that it is will shut our ass down. Okay, that, that it is that simple, and we can't lose it. Now, now this person will know who declined their post. Like I said, this was a little closer to home. I said, ha ha ha, but this has already been on the page. Okay, because I happened to be sober at that point in time, and I remembered it from earlier. Okay, so like that's very rare. That's very but, rare. But but that literally <laughs> triggered that person. And that person actually brought it up on another thread and tagged David it. Like, like, stop being so triggered. Like, please, like, just have fun on it. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I, I, the page is for fun. Like, and it, as, soon, as soon as you stop making it fun for me, I'm going to kick you off. Like, I'm just going to not, bye, bye. You're not being fun. You're being retarded. Okay. So, like, we just want people to have fun and stop being so fucking triggered. Stop. All right. Just keep scrolling. Scroll to the next thread if you don't like it. But that's my book of Earl. I've said it before about being triggered, but honestly, just for the sake of all humanity, calm down. If you have to take the time to write a post, write a response, like please make it a joke. And if somebody comes back with a bigger haymaker than yours, just give them the golf clap. It's Masters. It's Masters weekend, right? Give them the golf clap. Hey, good job. You got. You're you're funnier than me. You're more wittier than me. Good job. Good job. Okay, gotcha. So that pretty much covers that. Uh, and so Nick, Kyle, Nick, yeah, Nick, go ahead. yeah, Nick, real quick, elaborate on last night for our viewers. You know who think that uh, don't really know what we're about. That, that's a big one. Oh yeah, right. So so that's I allowed this because I I was having a few Chardonnays. You know, a couple of White Claws, maybe you know a couple of Trulies maybe mixed 10 or in there. 20. <laughs> Maybe 10 or 20, you know, I, when you, once I get all hopped up on the white claws, you got to watch out. So somebody tried to post their page that they started, right, on our page. And every time I decline those and I say, please put this on our professional page. We have a professional podcast page. So I don't decline it because we don't want to help you out, but we have a professional page that people go to that are more professional. And it's like, put it on there. And this motherfucker writes, apparently admins don't care about soldier suicide. Interesting, right? Cause uh, what we're literally here for. Anyways, so, and it's my own therapy, motherfucker. All right, I, 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 you triggered me. You triggered me that last night. So I, I allowed it, I allowed the post. And then I commented, and then this guy is, this is where the trigger thing came up because he was so triggered that he shared the denial screenshot to where the denial screenshot even says, post this on our podcast page. And it's like, you, you're that triggered that you couldn't even read it. You just, like, you just wanted to get mad. So I, I probably a Marine, you know, like, I and maybe even Air Force because he's never been told no. I don't know. Like that's they like can read though. The Marines can't read. We know yeah, that. Yeah, Marines can't read <laughs> at all. And the Air Force is not really military, so who knows? So yeah, for those of well, you, well, we have our regulars that watch, and they know what we're all about. Um, but for anybody who's watching for the first time, we one hundred percent. Our sole purpose is to build the brotherhood, all right, and the sisterhood, the camaraderie that you miss when you get out. Like, come on the page. Post a picture of yourself like Buddy that turns into 400 comments, all right? That is exactly what would happen in a team room, in a platoon room, in a, you know. 500. 
Bob, yeah, 500 now. It's, it's enough. not what happens on Buddy's Tinder feed, though. <laughs> like, yeah. So, again, we are serious about it, uh, but we have a trash talk page and we have a, a, a podcast page that's more professional. We, we just want funny shit on, our, on our, our group page. That's all we want. All right, funny stuff. You know, go ahead and put your, put your service on there as a Cav Scout or someone was even brave enough to say that they were an MP. You know, is there any other MPs <laughs> here? Like, you know, and, you know, God bless that person. And because it's, it's coming, all right? The pain's coming. And that's the kind of stuff that we like because that's exactly what that guy's looking for. You think that – I'm going to throw a challenge out there. I want an MP on the show. Have we had an MP on the show yet? I don't think so. All right. We need to get an MP on the hey, show. I get one. My next door neighbor's an MP. I'll, hey, I'll let's have him on next week. Let's get him on the show because I want to ask him a serious question of was he ever happy about his job, one. And then, two, is he ever proud of it? Like, like – to be honest, I, I can't answer that because I was th- I would think that driving around in that car and having every other barrel chested freedom fighter looking at you like you're the fucking devil has to be like on top one of, the, of like has to be like one of the worst feelings in the world. On like, top of their job, they're the they're a straight blue falcon. Like there's yes. no other definition of a job that you're not a bigger blue falcon in. Yeah, yeah you're that. literally your only job is to fuck other dudes. All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. I got a four hey, break story uh, what about did you that. Do in the army. Well, you know those guys that you thank for their service. I used to fuck them up all the yeah. time. That was yeah. <laughs> that, exactly. So this this is a good segue into our next show that we get this guy on because this is going to be epic. Uh, that'll be a good uh, I have one. A, I have a great story on Fort Bragg. I, you know, I, you don't. It was it's really hard to sham out of PT in the eighty second. It's difficult. Like you have to like really put together a special plan. You got to be a like, ninja. Make, to you make it happen, here. right? So I found a way one time, right? I was like, I was like, I'm gonna go to the PRC PT test and cheer on the guys, right? And that's at like 4:30 in the morning. So I found a way to get out of PT because now I'm gonna go to the gym, so I don't have to run four miles because that's what they did in the 82nd back then was four miles every day. So it's like I, I'm, I'm gonna go to the gym and get jacked today. Hell yeah, F- awesome. So I go and it's remember Ritz Epps, so everything's there. And everybody's parking on the street. I, I, so I park on the street because I'm in the army. I see everybody else do it. I do it, right? And, and, and I get out of my car, and this MP rolls right by me. And I wave to him. And they wave back. And I'm like, hi. You know? And so I go work I out. I got this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right? So I come back, and there's a ticket on my car. They're ticketing. All of these cars, there's over 80 cars on this freaking street and it's all a hundred dollar ticket. Buddy, what's 80 times a hundred? 80 hundred. There you 80 go. So, so they're making, <laughs> they're making eighty hundred dollars today, right? And, and so I was like, I'm mad because like, dude, I, I waved to you. You could have easily said you can't park there. And I would have moved my car. Thankfully, two SF guys came out, you know, and they're because they're allowed to go to the gym, you know, and so they they come out. Are not anymore, buddy? You guys are still allowed to go to the gym, right? Oh, we have our own gyms. Yeah, but, yeah, own gym. we're yeah. to, I was just waiting for you to tell what happened when they came out because I will <laughs> guarantee they lost their fucking mind. Right, right. So they get out and they go, one guy goes, hey, come here. And like the, the, the MP comes over there because remember MPs, their rank doesn't matter, you know? And he's like, he's like, what the fuck is this? Right? And the MP's like, well, you can't park there. He goes, why is it a hundred dollars? He's like, every fine is a hundred dollars on Fort Bragg. And he goes, what does the money go to? So now he's like starting to like, he's like, what does this money go to? He's like, uh, um, well, I, I, we, that's how we pay for uh, some of the, it's like, no, 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 no. He's like, where does the money go to? I want to find out where his money goes to because you just made $800 today. Like, there's 80 cars on here. What the fuck is all this money going to buy? Like, I want to know what this money is going to And he starts, he starts going shit, and he crumples up the paper, and his buddy grabs him. Right? He grabs him by the arm because, like, it's about to get nasty, right? And then all of a sudden, you're, woo, 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 woo. Like, so his, the partner, I, I got to find out who the partner was because he has situational awareness. The partner was already radioing for help. 
right? So like, cause like this partner knew what was coming. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the background, like, I don't know what's, I might jump in here, don't know yet, kind of you know, dipping and diving, I'm gonna get involved with this. So then the, the E7 shows up and he's like, hey, what's up? And they tell their story. I tell my story and he just takes the ticket and he's like, all right guys, you guys are good. Don't worry about it, you don't gotta pay him. All right, and he's like, he tells him, he's like, go get all these tickets off of here. <laughs> like so, yeah, so that was, it, I uh, I literally to caveat <laughs> off that story, I got pulled. Ooh, that's over a big word. That's a first time word. Went out to a rage. Ooh, that, that's this, an enlisted word. That moves. My car, and he's like, "Go, oh, you know what? I pulled you over." And I was like, "Yeah," because you were sitting at the bottom of a steep. Damn it, buddy! You got the Joe. You got the Joe Brinson problem. Was going over. You got the Joe Britson problem. That was probably super funny, but now nobody knows what the fuck you just said because your internet went. It, it wasn't. It, it, it probably wasn't. wasn't. So I guess I could tell nah, one more MP Dave. story, Dave. I, 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 and then we'll let some other people tell some uh, MP stories. I we so, we should save all the MP stories for uh, next week when we have the. We MP can, going. but nobody nobody's gonna remember this. We're all gonna get drunk anyways. So I drove a '97 Kia Sophia. That thing, right. the black, the black car, right? Yeah, or right. Or I, I constantly had to correctively train soldiers for looking at me in it, right? I had to stop, get out, and be like, "Do not stare at me when I'm in my Kia." All right, don't judge the staff sergeant when he's in his Kia. You just start doing fucking push-ups right now, okay, Roger? All right. First of all, it cost two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars what you bought it for. I remember when you got it. Yep. Yeah, two thousand dollars with forty thousand miles on it. The thing was awesome, right? So. I, I think it had two and a half horsepower. Not quite sure uh, what it was really pushing out. Um, probably 80, 100. And so when I get down to Chicken, you know, Chicken and Plank Road, and I get to the stop sign there, I take a right and I get pulled over. MP says, You ran that stop sign. I said, No, I didn't. Right. And he's, he gives me a $100 ticket anyways, because Fort Bragg, $100. So I go to the MP station. I go, I want to fight this ticket. They're like, we well, can't really fight him. I'm like, I want to fight him. Who do I talk to? Well, you got to go talk to this uh, colonel. And I was like, okay. Talk to this colonel. So I go to the colonel. I said, hey, sir, I got a ticket for running a stop sign. He goes, yeah, you shouldn't run stop signs. And I was like, I agree. I was like, but I drive a 97 Kia. The turn on to Plank is a 90 degree turn. It is impossible for that car to make that turn without stopping. Like it literally has to stop. And he goes, that's the best defense I've ever heard. And he ripped up the ticket. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so again, there's ways around beating these MPs. You just got to be a little more clever. I right? just got to be able to come up with the, you know, the, the right excuses. But Hey, uh, Kyle, give us the last word, man. Uh, and if you want to plug something again, go for it. You got any battle buddies you want to say hi to just uh, give us the last word. And then Dave will close us out. Yeah. Man, I want to thank y'all for having me on. I appreciate it. I love what y'all are doing. And uh, if y'all want to find my platforms, again, it's activedutyrx.com and barragecoffee.com. And uh, you can find me on Facebook at Kyle Early 33 And please go subscribe to my, my new YouTube channel, Battle on the Homefront TV. And um, there'll be a lot more stuff for me. Let's see it. Awesome, Kyle. I appreciate you coming on. Great show again, Trash Talkers. Make sure you go to shopveterantrashtalk.com. We got a lot of new merch in the store. So make sure you cop that merch and know that part of our proceeds go to Stop Soldier Suicide, which is our freaking mission. And uh, we're just getting started. So uh, great show again. Thanks for coming on, Kyle. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. See you guys next week. I'm out.